Hello, today another modern tech fail. Uh, this little LCR, LCR meter from BK Precision. It's a nice instrument, except it's super fragile and it breaks if you have the slightest residual voltage on your capacitors. And then you get ROEO2. Hello and welcome back. We interrupt our regular programming of gorgeous vintage instruments repairs to deal with modern tech annoyances, plus some new tool review. To be fair, the BK Precision 879B LCR meter is very far from being an annoyance. It's a very accurate yet reasonably priced LCR meter that also gives you D and Q quality parameters as well as several frequency testing ranges. It's small enough that I can bring it to whatever instrument needs to be checked. That is unlike my also good but also bulky and expensive HP 4262A LCR meter that is permanently sitting on my bench shelf. And this monster is not going to move from there unless there is a really big earthquake or I accidentally discover teletransportation. But the BK879 has one big flaw. If you test an electrolytic cap and there is any voltage left on it, even a modest amount, it will blow the meter. And the interwebs are full of reports of broken BK LCR meters. In fact, this is this instrument's second repair. The first one was done under the generous three-year warranty. I had been pretty good at avoiding trouble for the many years since then, but recently I tried to check a large filtering cap from one of my atomic clocks. Although the clock had been powered off for several minutes, this old cap was very, very good. Ah, these good old caps that last forever, don't be vague, insist on Sprague. Not sure if this one was actually a Sprague, but I tell you, they don't make caps like they used to. So it must have had some voltage left on it, and just like that, the meter went poof. But now it's many years past its warranty, so let's see if we can repair it on our own. Now, it's all modern SMD witchcraft in there, and pretty small at that. Which brings me to the second point of this video. I just got a new pair of SMD tweezers from Secure. They did send me the tweezers for free, but they did not ask to control anything I want to say about it. I had been wanting to get one of these for a long time. I have a cheap hot air gun that works super well. It's featured in my Amazon list on my CuriousMark website with links to many other handy dandy tools I use in the lab. The hot gun works great for larger ICs and components, but when you want to target just one tiny SMD, that's not the right tool. You'd end up desoldering a whole bunch instead. So when Secure asked if I wanted to review their tweezers, I jumped at the opportunity. But back to our meter. Fortunately, Gurren and Sander had the same instrument with the same air found some hot chips in it, identified one of them as a negative power supply chip that was not producing, say, negative voltage, figured out which chip it was from its cryptic SMD markings, replaced it, and voila, it works again. I linked his article in the doodly-doo, and we are going to see if we have the same problem, which I highly suspect we do. Well, I think I know how to repair it, um, and I'm going to try to attempt that and show you what breaks. Because apparently I'm not the only one, this is the second time this one is repaired. Uh, because of course when you test capacitors, there's always, always be some voltage on it. You're bound to forget to discharge them. And since it's a uh, surface mount thingy, I'm going to try also this new secure surface, ma surface mount tool to uh, do the job. So here we go. BK Precision, repair the second. And and it shouldn't be like this. It should be totally protected against that. Most LCR meters, not only you can test uh, capacitors that are charged, but you can apply voltage while you test the capacitors. So you can test them under their uh, working conditions. So I don't know what's wrong with this guy. It's a design fault, if you ask me. All right. Uh, however, well built, well shielded. Um, I like BK instruments in general. They are kind of um, industrial grade, but not that expensive. Tada! Turn it on. 
and I use uh, the precision thermal sensor. This chip right here gets very hot. Oh no, it's this one right there. This fellow gets super hot. I'm going to confirm that with the thermal camera. You can see the part that's super hot. So this little guy right there. 94 degrees. No good. All right. Um, can I get to it with this tool? Uh, so the advantage of the secure tool here is that it uses standard. Uh, I have to. Don't remember the name of the brand of these, but they make standard ones. Ah, uh, it's called GBC tips. The tool comes by default with very fine pointy tips, great for tiny SMDs with two leads. But I equip myself with additional wider flat tips, which might be a better match for this tiny IC. As you can see, the secure ones I got on Amazon were very reasonably priced. Yeah, I think that's going to be a better fit. So tips are interchangeable, so let me interchange them. So you need a super small iron wrench on all four corners. That should do it. Yep. And the um, the heating element is inside the tip itself, which why they, which is why they can make them so small. Oh, this guy is. It detected it had no tip. Smart. I didn't expect that. Okay, this one goes. And these ones are more like paddles. Cluck. Okay, so that should work. There you go. More or less flat. Okay, and then there's one button that you... I don't press, it's working. Okay. So now it should sort of work. Yeah, I can see it. There we go. Made short work of that. It's pretty good, except it would be nicer if they wrote on the button what they do. So here's my pad. It's right there. It's a little chip I removed. With absolutely no problem using the tool. And I should probably just retin it and flux it and then use the tool again. of flux never hurts and by the way the, the replacement part is this guy is TPS 60400 DBVT it's a charge pump regulator inverter so it that's what makes the negative voltage so here is our charge pump chip it takes a positive voltage and turns it into a negative voltage wait that sounds like magic how do you create a negative voltage from a positive voltage. It's actually not that hard using two caps and a few switches as the operating diagram shows. You first connect the capacitor C-Fly to the positive supply. C-Fly is external to the IC by the way. In our case, it's a high quality one microfarad tantalum. C-Fly then charges quickly and it's now like a tiny battery. You can disconnect it and it will keep all of its charge and voltage for a short while. You then quickly reconnect it in reverse to the output cap C0 using the switches. C-Fly then transfers its charge and negative voltage into C0. C0 now becomes a tiny negative battery and holds the negative voltage to the output while C-Fly is disconnected by the switches and reconnect it to the input for the next cycle of positive charging. This is all done quite fast at 50 kHz. At that frequency, both caps behave like ideal fast charging tiny batteries, so the circuit can be quite efficient. You just provide the two caps and the tiny IC takes care of all the rest, providing the switches implemented with MOSFET transistors as you can see here, and the precise switch timing so the output voltage is well regulated. Okay, I'm going to get our tool. 
Oh, losing the temperature. Okay, it's a long press to get it on. Okay, I'm making a mess of this. This is not helping. Okay. Okay, this was okay for desoldering, but for soldering, I think I'm just using the regular iron with a smaller tip. So when you desolder, it's super beneficial to desolder from both sides. When you resolder, that becomes a nuisance because yeah, there you go. This is much better because you you want the part to be attached on one end, and then you do this, and then you do that. Okay, I'm going to check on the microscope, making sure it's fine. Okay, I touch it, up, touch it up under the microscope, and it looks perfect. So now is the big test. So it's still going to have the air. Doesn't like it. That is weird. Did I replace it with the wrong part? Okay, I replace. It looks like I replaced the wrong chip. The chip, uh, the inverter uh, for the negative supply is this one. So I reread the article, and two chips were hot. I changed the bottom one, but the inverter one and the one to change is the top one. You'd think I made it on purpose to use the hot tweezers more, but no, I'm just dumb. Arg, I replaced that chip here, but you want to replace the chip here instead. My bad. So we're going to try to replace this one with this chip, which will be a good one, and put the old chip back and see if that gets me there. No press. There we go. Okay, it goes off, no problem. Weep. Up. All right. So, as we have discovered, that's the correct one for desoldering, but that's not the correct one for resoldering. So, the resoldering I'm going to do with a regular soldering iron, and I think I'm going to do it under the microscope. So we just attack it here. Oh. Microscope. Okay, so change of plans. I replaced the top one marked PFK1 and I put back the PCP1 that I had removed. Both were hot. And let's try this now. Ah, there you go. Repaired it. Okay, so replace the top chip, not the bottom chip. That's all there is to it. Uh, okay, well. Hope that if you have the same instrument and the same problem, um, you'll be able to repair it yourself. And just to be sure, turn it back on. This should be 4.7 nanofarads. And I can put the leads on both at the same time. There we go. And it's 4.89 nanofarad. Works again. And I finally figured out how this thing works without looking at the manual. So, short press is temperature up or down. So, 400 C, I don't know if you can see, and now it's 350, now it's 300. And then, long press is work and it, it, uh, it starts to heat up. There you go. And there is a mode where it picks that up itself and uh, I think it's long press over here and you go yeah, in the, in the menu and you can change whether it uses the, uh, the touch sensitive accelerometer to turn on or not. Right now it's not turned on. So I'm going to put a, a little sticker here that says what does what. <laughs> there. Okay, I have fixed it. Uh, other than that, uh, I like it. It has a nice little stand. It's powerful, heats up in a few seconds. Really helpful for the, the soldering SMD components. 
And I forgot to say, but the, it, it comes with a 65 watt adapter, uh, which is amply sufficient to drive it uh, into temperature in a few seconds, uh, which conveniently has a USB, a USB C, and a USB whatever A uh, to get yourself uh, hooked up to. So it's, it's for the price, it's, it's amazing what you get. I'm going to keep it and use it.